Welcome to my lunchtime Techie Tuesday. Um, many of you be, may be watching this um, when you normally are expecting to see me live, which is 7 p.m. on Tuesday. But the third Tuesday of the month, sometimes I have a meeting in the evening, and such is the case tonight. So um, you might be watching the replay of this. If you're um, able to catch me live, welcome. And I do have some announcements to make, um, some things to catch you up on, some exciting things that are going on. And, um, and then we'll do a page together. So as I did last month, we, I, we, yeah. I have a lot of input from you as we go along. I will be making a page using a sketch from the Creative Memories Virtual Crop, which was last week. Hey, Casey, good, glad you could make it. Um, so well, let's see, let me just jump right in because I know, oh, hey, Kim. Um, thanks for joining us, it's early for you. Maybe you're just having coffee. Um, all right, so there is an in the feed drawing today. So to be entered, just comment, let us know you're here, and then like, um, like this video. And then the little bot in the background. Hello from Missouri. Welcome. Um, the little bot will make sure that you are entered into the giveaway. So, and that'll be $10 that you can choose in CM credits towards uh, Creative Memories Digital, or you can choose a forever gift certificate. Yay! I was a couple minutes get late getting on. It's hard to get on in the middle of the day. Stuff, lots of stuff going on. So there is a promo going on right now at Creative Memories, where if you spend $75, you get to pick one free. And of course, there is a virtual um compliment as there usually is um to this uh deal great glad you all made it um so i am just going to share that with you real quick and so that you can see the specifics those of you that are uh by scraptual so you um do paper and digital scrapbooking. So um, this is the promo that's going on right now for the, for the are you card makers and paper um, scrapbookers. Um, they're these great stickers. That's one of them. So you get to choose one of three gifts if you spend $75. So I'm going to tell you the paper, then I'll tell you the digital. And it is, they are while supplies last. So one of them is the two stickers. The second one are the colored envelopes and um, a2 size uh, cards that you can decorate. The third one is this uh, template over here. And so all the details are out here, but what I wanted to show this group, since this is Techie Tuesday, as I fly by the paper options, is that if you spend $30 in, um, in art or digital artwork or custom products, then you get this um, uh, shades of a digital art kit for free. So that's um, cro the Croptoberfest, the digital, the Golden Harvest, the Happy Hauntings, and the Seasonal Sighting. So it's just paper, no embellishments, but um, you can always use those for backgrounds. And you can check out a different one of my Techie Tuesdays if you need help on how to install those um, Creative Memories digital kits. Okay, so that is the promo that's going on right now. All right, I do have a mini card class. Again, I know y'all are digital, but I might catch some of my uh, by scraptual people um, <laughs> uh, in uh, the beginning here for my announcement. So Thursday in two days, I have a mini card class going on at Cherry Hill Ice Cream in Daytona. It's $10, you're gonna make two, two cards, you're gonna pick a treat, and that be ice cream, coffee, or water, and then you pick a gift, and you can pick the um, all-purpose scissors or the dual tip um, black black pen. So who couldn't use an extra one of those? So if you're local, sorry Debbie from Missouri, but if you're local and you can join us, um, I do have a couple spots left for that on Thursday. All right, moving right along. This is the card kit for this month. They will be shipping out in the next two days. Tomorrow and Thursday, I ship the farthest location. So my California girls, my Texas girls, 
I will ship yours out tomorrow. And then those of you that are closer, yours will probably go out on Thursday. And I am driving to Raleigh on Friday. So everything will be headed out before I go, unless you're really close in town, then I might drop it by next Monday or Tuesday. All that to say, it's not too late for you to sign up for that. Those are the cards. They're super duper cute. And you get the whole um, vitamin C embellishment pack with it. So all those fun leaves on there and the gemstones, they all come in the embellishment pack. And that's a $10 value from Creative Memories. Okay, Casey. Yeah, we'll see you in 95. <laughs> Maybe we'll end up at the Brunswick Starbucks together. Um, all right. So virtual event is my National Scrapbook Day. Why do I do a virtual event for National Scrapbook Day? Well, many of you know, because you're already attending my Go Gray in May. And I think that's the next slide. So I used to do my National Scrapbook Day in um, conjunction with my May fundraiser for pediatric brain cancer. Um, a couple of years ago, I separated them, made them into two events, which is really great because my virtual event, that means um, people from far and wide can join us. So I really like the virtual um, events. They're completely virtual so that all of our scrappy friends from all over can join. So what does that mean for you specifically who are digital watching this now? Well, there's a kit you can purchase $29.95 that gives you access to the event. That's your registration for National Scrapbook Day. And it will get you all the digital templates that you can use in Artisan um, to create the layout, all the challenges that our paper friends using it for a feeling for emoji guys, but um, but that is that is the deal. So, and they're templates that you can use over and over again. So that'll be really fun. And if you're already uh, getting my card subscription, and you can just add on the National Scrapbook Day event for fourteen ninety five, and I give away over two hundred fifty dollars in prizes that week. And there'll be challenges. And it's the same weekend. There's a 12-hour crop on Zoom that Saturday. Um, and um, and what was I going to say? I was thinking in my head, oh, that's the other thing I was doing this weekend. Because I just told my husband, oh, I think I'm going to Tallahassee that weekend. But I can't. I have a 12-hour crop with you. What am I even thinking? I'm like triple book that weekend. One thing fell off the calendar for Friday, so I am all yours that weekend. <laughs> okay, registration now 75% full. I just updated that. Um, the full tables are gone for Saturday. There is still room on Zoom for those of you that can't be in the room. Um, and there's room Friday, Saturday, half table. It is a fundraiser. So I kind of dial back the amount of full tables available because we want to get as many bodies as we can in that room to raise as much money as we can for pediatric brain cancer, for Cannonballs for Cane. And for more information about Cannonballs for Cane, you can go to cannonballs.org. I do have two fun summer crops going on, July 28th and 29th, and also Scrapapalooza, August 18th and 19th. And many thanks to all those of you that are subscribed on YouTube. Debbie from Missouri is joining us via YouTube today, and I appreciate you watching, Debbie. All right. Well, let's get right into it, shall we? Last minute reminder, and I think all of you, I see your, your comments. You are entered into the giveaway. So someone will win $10 that they can spend on some awesome digital content today. All right, well, let's see. Now, last month, sometimes, you know, Tuesdays are when Microsoft does updates, and um, it was a little glitchy last month. So hopefully, um, we will do better today with the glitches. All right, so I'm in Artisan 6. I actually just started a new um, project called um, Techie Tuesday. Let me just see real quick what y'all are seeing. Sometimes I'm not. Okay, so let me move my screen down a little bit so you can see all those buttons. Sometimes I lose track of um, what my banners and what they're cutting off. And we want you to be able to see all of the things when I'm 
training. Okay, that seems to be a little better. Um, let me move this up a little bit. I feel like I'm at the eye doctor. Better? This or this? Okay. Let's get right to it then. I think we're, we're good now. All right, so these little things that come up, these design guides, you should read them if you haven't before. That just tells you what may potentially be cut off when you send it to print at forever.com. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that because I find it distracting. And I like to work, for the most part, in a two-page two spread view. Now, because I'm an artisan, I kind of have to flip back and forth um, to read comments. So if you have, I'm going to be, um, oh, yay, Deb. I just saw your comment about card class and, uh, we're excited to have you here too, Debbie. So I'll flip back and forth to make sure I'm not missing any questions as I go along. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I'm just seeing this one page is go up here to the view tab and then my choices are all page trim and spreads. So if I have it on all, what that means is if I'm just, this is whatever kit was up. Oh, apparently it's recipe book kit. That is a very old CM kit. So if I have it on all, I'm going to see everything that may be laying outside of the print area. So you can drag and drop things out here. They will not print. That's what all is. If I'm looking at page, you notice how those disappear. And that's because you're just going to see that. Now, they're still out there. And you know that because you can see on the left, you can see the little garlic and you can see this little tag over here on the left under my elements. I'm way over here um, on the left side of the screen now. That's showing you everything that's on your workspace. So not necessarily on your page, as you can clearly see, showing it on the workspace, not on the page. If you get lost, um, you can click on one of those items and it will highlight it as it did on my screen to tell you where it is. So if you inadvertently dragged something off your view, then you can drag it back on here. Um, then there's the trim. So you can show the trim. Um, so you can see where, you know, your, where your, um, your bleed area is, um, so that nothing important in it is in there. Um, if I say trim with current binding, it's going to show you where that gutter is. So in this case, that's a 12 by 12 book. So since it's not a lay flat, I'm going to lose that half inch on the side. Now, as you get good with artisan, you will, um, just kind of intuitively know where to stay out of. So generally I don't leave, um, the trim. Uh, with current binding on, I just leave the regular, the regular trim on. And I do like to work in a two page spread. Now your options for two page spread are two separate pages. So you can see with the line down here, the another view you have is two separate trimmed pages, which really isn't much different, but it's showing you the trim. And then the third option is two bound pages. Now, the nice thing about the bound pages is you see how they're, these lines overlap in the center. So again, it's telling you, you're gonna lose some down in the binding. So if I slide this over, see how it disappeared? And so that's just showing you, it's, it's going over the cliff into the, into the binding. And so it kind of keeps you away from that because things disappear over there if you get too close. Um, like I said, you generally, the more you use the pro program, like I just intuitively know to stay away from this area. You can also drop, like I just did, a tab line about half inch to three quarters of the way from the edge. And you could just know okay, stay away from that. So if you find it annoying that things are like disappearing into that gutter, if you're in a two page view, you can just drop one of these tabs instead. And then you'll see your whole object, but you'll just know, okay, that's going to get cut off. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Just hopped over there to make sure there wasn't any questions. Okay. So let's get rid of this frame and the garlic because we won't be using those. 
and I'll get rid of this tab line. Now, I mentioned that I will be using a sketch from the virtual crop. So I actually used the same sketch last week to do my cool time with Tara and I did paper pages using the same sketch. Um, so we talked a little bit about how now with people using their camera, there's a lot of portrait, a lot more portrait photos. So I like this layout because it's got basically for portrait. Now the awesome thing with digital, and I don't have to tell you this because you all are digital divas, um, is that we as digital scrapbookers can resize our photos to whatever. So if you want to make a whole photo, the whole darn size of your 12 by 12 page, you certainly can. So when I was doing my paper one, um, I should, I, 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 must, I printed this out, so I must have this somewhere, but <laughs> digital. But this um, five by seven here, I in the paper world, right, you have to make a special uh, purchase of that photo because most people just print everything four by sixes. Okay, so I'm working off this. Let me just look really quick on my desktop and see if I have that um, picture somewhere. From the blog so that you can see what it is hold please while i look for this oh i thought i had it well i don't um okay <laughs> This is not effective, but you smell what I'm cooking. Basically, what I'm going to do is take, um, you know what? I know where I can get them from. Let me just pull it into my photos, get photos from computer. I know it's saved to my Dropbox because I posted it on my website. So this 2020 is coming up. So if you save a sketch from your um, phone, you can print it out paper. I find paper is a nice, nice way to have it. Um, but you can also put it on your screen. And I think I've shown, okay, here it is. All right. I think I've shown on other Techie Tuesdays how I can just take this, talk about a cheat, and make it the size of the page like that. And then you can basically just draw boxes so you don't even have to necessarily measure them. So I, if I go to insert up here, my insert tab at the top of the page, and I go over to shape, and then I say rectangle, I can take this rectangle. I want to remove the, um, the outline. And then I can just make it right over this template. I mean, how easy is that? Now, it says it's 3.987 by 3.987. And you see down here on the design, it says to make it four by four. So you can actually come over here and make it four by four, or you can just continue to like draw, you know, this little square. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those squares. Now, these three are the same color. So I'm going to kind of leave them this blue right now. Now, why do I show you this? Well, a couple of reasons. You can buy templates. And in fact, like I said, with my digital national scrapbook day, that it comes, you're going to get the sketches. You're going to get what I'm making now already pre-done. But I also, participating in the virtual Creative Memories crops are really fun. And if you buy the Creative Memories artwork and you're a Creative Memories fan, um, it's fun to make your pages and throw them out there um, onto into the virtual group. Now I'm going to change this color. So I'm going to come over here, this little line above the page, there's a fill box. So I'm going to pick a different color. I'm just going to pick a whatever. A, a light gray just so that I can differentiate between um, these dark blue 
and I need three of them. Now my little, my little sketch is going away. Goodbye sketch. Now this piece behind here is a um, four by seven. But again, if I'm just um, like tracing basically onto this template, then I can just take this and just boop, drag it all the way down. Um, oh, the four by seven is the piece underneath. Okay, but I do need a piece that goes under. And I can make that a slightly different. Now, again, I'm just doing a sketch, so I'm not filling these with paper. So now my sketch has disappeared. So I'm over here on the left side, the embellish, the embellishments, the elements, and I'm going to drag my sketch back up to the top. That way I'm reminded about what's going on and I can throw in this mat, this five and a half by seven and a half inch mat, throw on the photo, throw this four by seven on. I can basically do the next layer. So I did the background layer. Now I'm going to do the top. So I'm going to say insert or shape a rectangle again. I'm going to change this fill color. I don't know, something dramatic. I'm going to get rid of my outline. And now I'm going to make this the five and a half by seven and a half inch um, mat. And then I need to just copy and paste this to do the four by seven inch mat. And again, and these can all, all these colors can, I, I'm going to fill them with paper in the final product, but I'm just showing you how easy it is. All right. So now I'm just going to throw another color in there. And now these little borders in, in the paper world, right? Those are border maker cartridges, but in the digital world and most of our kits, we get little, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Long embellishments, borders. Thank you. Thank you, I said to myself as I answered my question. Okay, so now I can take my sketch and kind of move it back to the back. All right, so here is my um, sketch. I need to add an empty photo frame. This is going to be my five by seven. I need to add another one. This one, what was this one? If you forget, okay. So it was just like a four by six. And draw that back. Okay, so this is what I've got going on right now. Doesn't look like much, but I'm gonna um, copy so i clicked copy now i'm going to come over to this other page to do the other page and we're going to do the same thing and why did i copy it well because i'm not going to be able to see it on this other page over here so now i'm going to click over here i should need to hit save the reason i need to save is because my preview didn't update so now i'm on the right page my preview of my left page updated and now i'm going to paste my and because it was already sized 12 by 24 you see it like popped up when i pasted it boom right there ready to go so i need to make the background the back layer first and that is just basically the background so i'm going to click on the background on the left hand side and then i'm going to click fill solid color and it's this light the lightest gray that matches this top and bottom little section of the left page. Now I'm going to add this little blue piece. I'm going to add that in the 12 by seven. So I'm going to um, go to insert shape. It looks like a little paw print, but guess what? There's, there's rectangles too in there. And we're just going to make that. I need to change my fill solid color it's the light blue i need to get rid of my outline and now i need to finish making it the right size i'm going to put it below the sketch now so i can do these um empty photo frames so the default is a four by four so that's easy we're gonna slide that right over here 
Then I'm going to add another one. Those here. And last one over here. Now I just copied and pasted that and I just did control C for copy and control V for paste. I apologize. I, when I'm doing Techie Tuesdays, I like to kind of right click so that you have a visual cue of what I'm doing because you can't see what my hand is doing up here. But when I get caught up in it, I just go, go wild. All right, so I'm gonna go over here on my elements because you can't put something behind the background. And since I made my background the, the right color, I'm just gonna hide the sketch. Okay, so here it is. Um, and, you know, I think maybe I might change. I'm gonna click back over here. Now, you notice on my little page preview on the right, it didn't update and that's because I didn't hit save. So I'm gonna hit save. Um, it, the program allows you to work back and forth on the two, but that little preview on the side won't update till you hit save. So it is important to hit save. Now I'm going to change the fill of these to that light gray because I feel like aesthetically I need it to um, match um, this other background paper. I don't know why. That's just me. Um, and I, it is, uh, once you have it built, it is a little like paint by number, okay? And that's the way the sketches are kind of made to kind of work. So now when I go to pick my papers, I'm going to make the same paint, I'm going to use the same paper to fill these dark gray, and then the same paper to fill these light gray, and the same paper to fill the background over here in this piece. And so then the whole page will kind of have a nice flow to it. Let me go check over the comments and make sure that I have not missed any questions. Oh, good question. So Casey asked, um, yeah, it is, it is, <laughs> it is very easy. And, um, if you're geometrically challenged and you don't like to measure or if you're afraid, I mean, just like I've been doing tracing is really easy. Okay. So Casey asked, how do you reuse this? So you could basically start a album that's just templates where you just sit down and make these. Maybe it's at a day crop, maybe it's at a retreat. And you're like, today, I'm going to make a bunch of templates using the sketches from the Creative Memories virtual crops. Okay, so then create a project and call it um, sketches or 12 by 12 sketches, 12 by 12 templates, whatever you want to call it. And then when you're in your real project, because you can import pages that are completed or like this templates um, into any project. So, and the way you do that, and I think I definitely have done it in a Techie Tuesday before, but to review um, from the home tab up at the top, you have um, over here, you have template. It says change this page style, but keep a current photos. And then it says use a template um, from an art kit or using a page file from my computer. That's the one you want. So if you make some templates and you start a project that's just your templates, like your go-tos that you're going to use over and over again, your favorites, start a project, make your templates in there, and then you're going to say, use a page file from my computer. And then you're going to browse to that file. So as always, it's important to know where you are in the world on your computer and where you need to go to get the items that you need. So in my case, it's in documents, see documents, artists and projects. And then I would find my templates folder if I had one uh, file, and then you would see all the pages. And if they're just by, um, by name, let me just go into one like this then you would just click the button until like if you see this and they're very small or this and you can't tell what it is you would just keep clicking through until you see a preview of what you want so these are actually the templates i made for croptoberfest um, so if you participated in virtual croptoberfest you received these digital templates and then you just drag and drop then it's paint by number so it's very easy to import um import 
these pages you create into another project. So hopefully that answered your question, Casey. Yay. Okay. So back over to here. So I'm going to make a page real quick now because there, because I know they're right on my desktop. Um, pictures I took from Aiden's track meet this past weekend. If I can find, here it is, UNF track. Oh, they're small though. I'm sorry. This is where I should have picked these out before. I don't want to import all these hundreds of photos. I do wish they were a little bigger. Excuse me while I lean in and you get a close up of my face. Um, I don't even know really if I'm getting my child at this point, but I need, let's see, one, two, three, four, four photos. I'm just gonna kind of grab four photos. Mm, let me grab a picture of Emma Jane too. <laughs> okay, so I just selected four photos and now I'm going to hit open and I don't think you could actually see that because you're just looking at my screen and wondering what I was leaning into. Oh, so I need five photos. Like I said, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what photos I grabbed. All right. So definitely there's a better picture of Emma Jane, but for all intents and for, for this, demonstration. I'm going to put a five by seven of Emma Jane on that one. That's my son's fiance. And um, then I'll do four other pictures of Aiden. Again, these are not the pictures I would normally use, but okay, there's one. It wants to make this photo the background. Oh, I need to switch pages. So that's important to know. What it was doing was it, the whole pic, uh, pay, two pages were blanking out and that's because it was seeing um, my, um, my sketch behind and it was, was trying to replace that. And I was trying to put it into a picture slot on the right side and I did not um, click over to the right page yet. You know, you have to make sure that you click over to that page before you start trying to fill stuff. <laughs> Where are you? Okay. All right, so now I can fill these in. And they're kind of dark. Oh, I know what I, I know what picture I can put here. Sorry, I mean, this is not even, I know, I know what picture I need to get though. And then I'll have enough, enough photos. Okay, it was in my, and I'm sorry, I don't think you can see this window that's opening when I jump out to um, Dropbox. But I took a picture that is that I want to use at the track. Here it is. So I think I'm going to move Emma Jane. Um, so I'm going to come back over to this page. Let me save. So my preview updates, I, I don't know why. I mean, besides just saving obsessively. So I took this, this cool picture. It's got Go Ospreys. My son goes to UNF and is a runner. And he's on the front of the schedule um, for uh, this for this season. And... Um, You know what? <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm just going to throw any picture on here. It doesn't matter. These aren't the pictures. But then I thought, oh, now I know what picture I want to put there. So poor, poor EJ just um, 
went from a five by seven to not on the page. And I love her dearly. Um, but my mother-in-law was visiting. I'm trying to find this picture. Um, oh, shoot. Do I not have it? Well, well this is a cute picture, too. Um, Aiden's on the fence outside the school, too. And I have a picture of her with her, like, hand on his shoulder. Okay. This is a good one, though. This was at dinner after, and he's holding his his fortune from P.F. Chang's. Okay. <laughs> Not sure I like the aesthetics of, of that with the other ones. May have to go back here. Or there. Okay. That has the, the season dates that I took in front of the track. Have... Okay, good. No, no one has, I haven't missed a question. All right, now to make it pretty. I've got the paper. I don't like these pictures. I will definitely change them. But one of the things I want to show you, this picture to me looks a little dark. And you do have some photo editing tools at your um, use in this program. So don't feel like, in fact, a lot of people get bogged down in editing their photos exactly the way they want them before they bring them in here. Now, because stuff that I take on my phone, I tend to edit if I'm going to post it on Facebook and it goes up to Dropbox edited, well, then that's done the work for me. But if you're just dragging the photos in from wherever, like I did from my, from my Nikon, um, you might have to do some brightening up. And you can do that color tab up on the top. You can also do things using photo. Like cleaning up color, you'll see you can do hue, wash, brightness. You can change things black and white. So I can go into brightness, and then I'm going to get all of these little boxes, contrast, brightness, highlights, just like you, um, you would in a um, photo editing program. And usually midtones solves a lot of issues just by punching up the midtones. You can also play with the contrast. Um, you can just brighten the photo up. And when you get it to the way you want it, then you say, okay, now this one looks dark. So I tend to do all this just, I am taking you through my process, honestly. Um, I do all of this before I start, um, before I start putting in um, all the other, um, all the embellishments and whatnot. Clicking back over to the page view so I can click onto the left side. Oops, I clicked on the wrong page. All right, now I'm on this page. Because now that I lighten those other ones up, I've, now I feel like I have to lighten this one up. I'm not going to spend any more time on it because I know that I am not going to... Um, use these. Now, now that I'm going to fill in these pages, I can go over here to my content and I can, um, the, I, I'm so sorry. I have an obscene amount of digital kits. It's terrible. How do I even know what I have? Honestly, I, I definitely have favorites that I go to. Um, I don't even know. I do have a track kit, but I know that's not going to necessarily, I have track and field. So that might work for some of the embellishments. And it is nice that when you're going into your content, if all the way at the top is your recent. So now that I've clicked on track and field, it's going to be in my recent. So I'm going to come back to that. I'm actually going to go to, what on earth is the name of those? um things that creative memories has that is um totally tonal that's what i want 
All right, so I was right by the T's. I was already there. Where are they? Oh, I see I'm clicked on embellishment. So this is actually an important thing for me to show you. Totally tonal is not gonna show up. Why? Because there's only papers in that kit. And so it is nice that this program will not show you um, a kit that does not have what you're look, you know, what you're looking for. So since I was clicked on the embellishment tab, totally tonal was not showing up. Now that um, I'm on paper, totally tonal is showing up, and I can easily go back to um, the track and field one when I want to. Okay, so the reason I went to totally tonal is their colors for their uh, school are gray and blue, and so. Uh, that is what I'm gonna. That is what I'm gonna use. And I'm. I mean, in general, um, blue, um, blue and green kind of go with lots of things. So I'm going to make. I think this background part gray. And so there's this. Um, I like this gray paper down here. So I'm gonna click on it and say fill selected shape. Now I'm gonna pretend that I'm filling it from the area of paper that it is. Cause sometimes there's like a gradient and I wanna stay true to that. So I'm gonna fill it with the top right part first. Then I'm gonna say fill selected item and I'm gonna take it right from this middle because that's where it is on the page. And then I'm gonna click on the bottom left and say, fill selected shape, and I'm gonna move it down to the bottom. Now you can also resize that, it keeps the aspect ratio. So I don't know if you can see, but there's little rings on this page. If I wanted to make that square super small, those rings are gonna appear bigger in this spot. Um, now I'm gonna take this and say, fill selected shape and see it knows the shape it's kind of putting it in and I'm gonna take it from the right side of the page. Now I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna go over to pages and then I'm gonna click on the right side and I'm gonna do this background. Back to content, right click, fill selected shape. It's got the whole 12 by 12, perfect. And now sometimes there's like a little, and I can see a little bit of uh, like a little variation in the colors. So what I like to do is go up to the arrange tab and flop it. So I get the mirror image so that those shadows, since so the paper doesn't look exactly the same, they're mirror images of each other. Again, that's just one of my crazy things that I do. Okay, now let's add some color to this. So I'm going to scoot back up in my totally tonals to the blues. And that is what I'm going to make. This says woven, woven jeans. This is terrazzo. So this has a little pattern to it. Let's see. Oh, I kind of like it. All right. So that's that. And now that I have the paper that I'm using... When it's done saving, I'm going to come back here to pages, click over here, fill this one back to the content, fill selected shape. Got it. I'm going to make this pink piece that piece as well. Fill selected shape. Got it. And now I'm going to make these ones a different blue. And maybe this jeans one actually maybe maybe a white let's see there's stripes maybe stripes <laughs> this is a problem with digital so those are pretty big i'm going to show you what i mean about adjusting so i'm going to say fill selected shape now what if i tried to fit this whole piece of paper into that little square now the stripes are going to seem very small. So you see how you can mess around with that. Um, I think I'm just going to try filling it white. 
And what I was going to say before, before I interrupted myself, was that this can be a problem with um, digital, is that because the choices are endless, you could play with a page forever and never and never finish it. So it is a it is a danger to digital. All right, so now um, waiting for it to save. This is where I will put in my text box. Oops, not there. You're on the wrong page, Tara. Alrighty, now I'm gonna switch over to here. And so I'm on the right page, insert text. See, it happens even to me. You just get caught up in the moment with what you're doing. And I'm going to change, I'm gonna create the text box since I got the size dialed in. Then I'm gonna come over here and change the text color. Now it's white. I like century Gothic, probably more like 14. Now I can journal in there. So the last thing I need to do is add, go into embellishments, which, oh, there are totally tonal embellishments. Apparently I was just blind. Actually, there's gonna be some good ones because there's like Rick Rack. But let's see what's in the track. There's a black dash. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Oh, it's kind of, it's a track. That's funny because it's kind of like a road. I'm not sure how I feel about that. There's a measuring tape. That would be good if you're a jumper. I love running, track and field. All right. Honestly, if that was more like asphalt and I could just fill that in black, then that would work. But um, so this will work. And then I can over here on my elements, take it down and slide it behind the blue if I want it to be behind there. If I want it to be in front, I can just leave it in front. And now that I have the shape on there, I just did control C, control V to add that. Now that I have that shape, I can actually leave it with the little stripes that it is. I can also fill it with a solid color or with a piece of paper. So down here, the third section is colors on the page. So it's picking up like a light blue um, that's in um, this paper. And so once you have that light blue picked and I pick solid color, that's gonna come up as the first recent choice. Now I want to come back here and I want to add under format, I want to add some shadows and I'm going to come in here and just add light shadows and that will just give the illusion that these things are on top of the page and that it's not a flat digital page and it might be hard for you to see that on the screen, but, um, but I can, but I can see it and you can tell when it's printed. Now I'm going to select both of these, right click copy or control C, and then I'm going to switch pages. I'm going to come over to the left page so that I don't have to go through the whole fill and rigmarole again. I can just right click and paste and slide them. They're both still selected. See how they disappear behind and slide them. So they match up with whoops. I went too far and then um, it thought I was trying to put them on the other page, which that will happen too. So as long as your mouse stays on the right page, then it'll, it'll be good. Okay. So now we have it. Save it. Then I'm going to come back here to content and I've got, what page am I on? I've got this track star. It's a little corny. I probably wouldn't use it, but the reason why I thought I would 
what does that say? Halfway mark over the hurdle. I go. Let me do going the distance. That's also a little. Some of these are a little corny, but um, since he is a distance runner, now I can put those stars. You see these stars? I can leave them, or I can kind of tuck them underneath here, and then just slide this behind the mat and see how then they disappeared. Not now oh, they're over. All right, and then this was a fifteen hundred. But normally, Aiden runs a 10K. And there's all kinds of fun little things. Finish. I won't bore you with all that. But basically, this page is done. I just have to add my text, my title, and, um, and, that, and that's it. So what do you think? Let me just go back here. <laughs> oh, I just see Katie. All right, categories, watch the YouTube replay. Yes, um, <laughs> yes, the categories. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't even use my categories. I'm, I mostly know where I'm headed when I get in there. Okay, so page is done and let me just, um, as a, reminder i'm going to move the sketch to the top and it's hidden um so that's that's what the sketch was and that is what the um what the end result is All right, you got out of um, out of something that um, something that I did today, and of course, if you have any questions or if you're um, uh, watching the replay and you have questions, just go ahead and add them. Um, oh, good, Kim. I'm glad that you like that too. Yeah, I mean, we made a page. Um, and definitely under an hour, I would have, I'll definitely go back and fix the pictures and pick the pictures I want to use. But hey, one track meet done. It was just one event. So, <laughs> so that's finished. I just have to journal. Isn't that always the case? It's done. I just have to journal. That is, gets us every time. Whew. I, when I'm designing, I really get into it. All right. Well, let's see who our lucky winner is today. Why don't we? Um, and let me share that page. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Let's see who our lucky winner is. Casey, congratulations. You are the winner. So you can let me know if you like it in CM credits or forever. You can text me. You can put it in the chat, whatever works for you. And I will make sure to get that to you either way. Congratulations. I hope everyone learned something today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube and you are a digital scrapbooker, um, I do suggest you subscribing to my YouTube. Uh, I put all the Techie Tuesdays in one playlist, so you can go um, you can go through them one at a time or as needed. And I guess that's it for now. So until I see you all again, stay scrappy, my friends. Bye-bye.